Hey guys, Sarkat here, and I wanted to give a quick build update on my Explosary build. I did pick in an Ascendance in the end, and I'm going to have a tiny sip of tea. It's really cold in the UK at the moment. Um, so, we ended up picking Pathfinder. Why Pathfinder? Briefly, since I covered all the major Ascendancy choices in the previous video, the main thing which came down to it is I wanted to try out Hidden Potential, which is the increased damage done uh, for every magic item you have equipped, meaning that I would struggle getting my stat requirements up on gear. As you can see, I have 132 dex, 204 int, 224 strength as a pathfinder. Nearly all the other options, and the main two I was sort of picking between were elementalist and champion. I figured this build did enough damage already, which is why I kind of ruled out berserker. If you wanted damage, berserker would give you the most, just because that creates you 40% more, and the nice quality of the life of the leech. Champion was the always have fortify option, very tanky. Elementalist was the sort of prolith map clear, uh, some nice survivability, some very nice damage in there kind of option. And then Pathfinder's kind of like the, oh, just has sort of bits of everything, very nice defense through the fast effect and so on and so forth. But if you look at all these other options, they always have like 54 decks. 63 decks so on and so forth and the main like disadvantage of pathfinder was it had this rooting out of ranger well it means that it has enough decks that it fills in all the decks requirements that i'm to worry about getting loads of decks on gear which is good when you're trying to use as many magic items as possible because it means you can just focus on getting life and resists on those pieces since we do use a couple of uniques in the build we do use the quill rain and we do, do use a comb's heart um, and we want to use Winds of Change, so that's three unique slots. Um, ideally, we'll be using Essence of Anger Crafted Jewelry in the end, because that will be a bigger DPS increase than using Magic Jewelry, but that's very expensive, that's very sort of end gamey. So until that point, just using Magic Rings and Amulet, so on and so forth. Not having to worry about capping out on stat requirements makes Ranger a really nice pick. As previously stated, Pathfinder does have incredibly good defense. I would argue maybe more defense than Champion. Because of all this um, flask effectiveness you get, it makes the Basalt super juicy. I'm trying to juggle all of the resistance flasks in as well. Um, meaning that with all the Ellie damage going on with Breach and stuff, with you know all the super Ellie flasks, you get crazy high max reds. You also get the 8% reduced early damage taken this is just flat so it applies to everything as far as i'm aware um which again makes you know this is a really nice option people say oh but you need that 50 percent reduced reflect damage from you know being a witch and it's like yeah that's great but if you've got you know just stupidly high max fire res and all this other mitigation going on then it kind of just does the same thing uh, you also get the really nice quality of life of the increased chance to ignite, which is huge. I argue that this sort of knocked out the prolif. Um, it's not obviously quite as good as having prolif, but having that increased chance to ignite on our AoE setup is really, really nice. Having increased early damage, they kind of wash each other out, but just having the quality of life of, you know, flasks, 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 I went for this. Um, it also scales the hardest when you do get the stupid stuff like Taste of Hate, Dying Sun, so and so forth. I'm really not planning on ever having a Dying Sun on Hardcore. But even just getting a Taste of Hate, Taste of Hate is ridiculous with Pathfinder. It's top end, but it's like achievable top end. Um, I also made a couple of changes to the tree since you last saw it, so I'll just quickly go over those. I dropped a Frenzy Charge. I dropped some life. And I changed the rooting slightly, and I picked up Jewel Curse. Um, I've been experimenting with dropping Frenzy Charges in quite a lot of my builds recently, and my thought process being is, while well, Frenzy Charges are great, you know, attack speed's brilliant, cast speed's brilliant, 4% more damage, obviously really good. It's not always active, and it does require two points. And for general map clear, it's up. For some bosses, they fall off, so on and so forth. Um, my curse on hit setup is using rain of arrows, not frenzy, so I don't have an easy way to cap out my frenzy charges on bosses without adds. Sometimes you don't want to run blood rage, sometimes it's a no regen map, sometimes you're doing labs, sometimes you just do something where you just don't want to run um, blood rage. This doesn't mean that I don't use frenzy charges at all in my build, I do still get the frenzy charge from Craitlin and Merciless, it's just for those two points. I would rather drop those two points and let them travel up to dual curse. 
dual cast gives me the option of running farmability as my main cast, and then my second cast is going to be either Elemental Weakness or Temp Chains. I'm planning on using Temp Chains for now because it gives some nice offense in the fact that it makes my Ignites last longer, so it makes my Ignites more beefy, and it gives me some nice defense. That's my current plan. If I feel like Temp Chains isn't quite performing enough, I will swap to Early Weakness. Another nice thing about Temp Chains is it's a green socket. And I'm trying to get most of my gear to be um, evasion based or armor evasion hybrid. So having easier colors is always good because otherwise my curse on hit setup is three blue, one green, which is pretty awkward to color. Um, whereas, you know, just getting two off colors is obviously a lot easier. Um, but yeah, I just, it's one of those things of the increased damage from both the temp chains and the early weakness, or temp chains or early weakness, is more than 4%. Um, it's just it's a bigger DPS increase and 4% more damage um, I do lose out on a tiny bit of life but temp chains should make up for missing out on 10% life another thing which I kind of like about this rooting is okay so you do this and that and these two things wash out heart of flame is eventually a nice thing to get by going on this top bit you get access to heart of flame you do lose access to flame walker but I'd rather come up this way I just prefer it that way so it's really not that much invested to pick it up. I also dropped a 5% um, radius node here. You could drop these three points, but I like Elementalist because it does give all rise switch and him potential build is very nice. And it does also give chance to ignite, which is very, very nice. With all of that in mind, I've just been leveling the character slowly the last few days. Do expect lag, still getting computer equipment upgraded. Whoops. Uh, level 68. Currently using a 5 link call rain and a 5 link carcass shack that I have lying around. I do have a Combs Heart in my stash um, that I will swap into, but I need to get my weapon swap uh, call rain setup sorted. So hopefully in this video we're going to get that sorted because I picked up a Porcupine set. Uh, the Porcupine is a new div card set which was added in like a little mini patch this league. And it gives you a six link short bow. Now in hardcore at the time of me purchasing these pieces, they were three to four chaos each. So I got a item level 50 six link short bow for about 20 chaos, which is obviously really, really good. Um, one thing to note is short bow is the base for Quill Rain. So I'm going to attempt to scour chance it. Now I do have more chances and more scours than this, but I'm being optimistic. Douglas Adams. 42 is the number of the universe that answers everything. I'm going to get it in my 42 scout chances, hopefully, and we'll end this video on a bit of a high. Um, but yeah, one other thing to quickly note about this card, it is amazing for explosive arrow. It can get you a cheap um, six link core rain if you're lucky. It's also really good for core stick arrow. It's just a good six link base, a cheap six link base, and it's also good for SRS, and you just use it as a crafting base. Let's see how lucky we are. Okay. Puck jump. Not quite. Not quite. Not quite. Not quite. And we're just going to keep going until hopefully we either get an incidental plus three or rather a quill rain. Come on. Not quite. I should have kept that reduced item requirement to roll up, but. We're on a roll. See what I did there? See what I did there? <laughs> uh, I'm getting flashbacks. The last time I like spam um, scour chance something was when legacy combs were going out of the league. Um, so legacy combs used to give a thousand life, and then the patch before they nerfed it down to 500. Everyone, everyone was buying up glorious plate, glorious plates, and chance orbs. And uh, I'm pretty sure Crypt managed to get two on stream at the time. It was pretty wild. Everyone was spamming to get up. Oh no, come on. We can do it. <laughs> Please. I also should have qualityed this up for the record. Oh well. We can now scour quality up and we'll try again. Next time, once I've got a new batch of scour shards and saved up. But anyway, I'm Tarky Cat. I'm going to keep gambling with my six link. Have a good day. Bye bye. I'll give you guys an update once.
This character's gone a bit higher. I did my outro in the wrong order. See ya.